The Papamoa Residents and Ratepayers Association was out in full force for its first meeting post-lockdown with one very special guest. It's so busy because we've managed to get the mayor here. This is the first time he has been invited on a couple of previous occasions. People are genuinely interested to hear what's going on with their council and uh, although we get Steve and Dawn Kiddy and Andrew uh, coming to these meetings, we really want to see the mayor because he's the guy that everybody wants to see. You know, we want to know what he's doing, what his thoughts are. We get the councillor's views, but sometimes we like to hear what the man at the top has got to say. And despite stepping into something of a lion's den, the man at the top had plenty to say. <laughs> Turn out here is Henry VIII said to each of his six wives, I won't keep you long. <laughs> um, tonight's the night for some honesty. Tonight is the night to say, uh, to listen to your, your issues, clearly there are a lot of them, uh, but tonight's also the night to address some historical issues and I welcome councillors, my colleagues here, Robson, um, Kitty, Hollis and Morris. This is the first time in my life I've never been a part of a team. And I could lie and say they're all a great team, but you can read it in the paper. We are anything but a good team. But ladies and gentlemen, I did not run for mayor to join up with the group of people, <coughs> excuse me, who I believe have held the city back for a long time. Rates, roads, wetland planting and the rubbish overhaul were the big talking points. The association wants to hold back any changes to rubbish and recycling collections for at least five years because of the cost. But the mayor wants action and says it won't be as expensive as some expect. Our recycling is abominable, it's abysmal. Having eight separate contractors is not working. Sometimes six of those eight trucks go to coal sacks to collect and they look for a particularly coloured burn or bag or whatever it is they do. It isn't working. And the 350 to 450 is going to be more like 250. We hope that's what we're working towards. The youngest person in the room asked the mayor about the tender process for the new rubbish contracts. I think there's a lot of concern for people's money, um, and that's been one of the largest concerns I've heard with uh, this, this uh, revised annual draft plan. Miller also has a different view on rates. I agree with a rates rise. I think it needs to be reviewed on how it's being done and be fairer for everyone. There were plenty of questions for the mayor, including one about the council's consultation process. So I'm hearing that you haven't been consulted on a range of things. Um, but if that's the case, then we, we absolutely will do better and one on council spending. Looking at our last council, we wasted a lot of money in the mount on the park. We wasted another lot of money on the stupid Breton roadway. And yet your council is going to spend $8 million on a footpath outside Farmers. An area there, why on earth are you going to do that when we need the money so desperately? Well, it's all the footpath, it's a linear park. Um, I think, again, Stan, to be corrected, but about three million of it is pipe work underground that needs to be done. With plenty of emotion in the room, things became a little heated right at the end. Now my question is, when are you guys going to stop wasting the black man's money? And then stop and pay my lovely politicians for you and the council ones. You get to Phoenix Park, you know, that was an overrun. You've got a place here behind the sir, with all due respect, that was a previous council member. I take your <coughs> And we are trying to do my better. I said to you that I'm not so process driven, I'm outcome driven. And to date the outcomes have been good. Yes, but you say you can't be one without the other. You've got to have a certain uh, on both sides. You can't just say I'm good at that, no good at this. So again I say to you, how do we stop the growth? Because we've got to fund it. Well, and there's no way out. You're going to have penny houses to sell because people are not going to be able to afford what you want. And with that, the mayor had fulfilled his civic duty and left, having survived his time in the Papamore Lion's Den. Ladies and gentlemen, could I ask you just please to uh, put your hands together and uh, Gavin Ogden, Local Focus.